What's up, it's Mr. G, and in this video, we're gonna be going through the G-Metrics ACU AutoCAD practice exam number two. Uh, this first video is going to be for questions one through 10. So I'm logged into G-Metrics here. I'm gonna to go to practice exam number two, training mode, and I'm gonna start a new test. Okay. I'm going to choose my version of AutoCAD. I'm actually running 2024, but I don't think that matters. Um, it's just Geometrics hasn't updated the exam in a while. All right, let's move this over here. So I've got question number one of 30 here. Um, I can click this folder in order to open up my Windows Explorer to see the different files that I might have to open during the, the test. So number one says open empty floor plan DWG. So I'm just going to double click on empty floor plan there and close this for now. All right. It says how many objects are within the desk layer? So the best way to do this is to use the Q select command. So I'm going to type in Q select and that'll bring up this dialog box and it allows me to select a certain or things that are on a certain layer. You could also do it for color, different line types, line weights. So up here it says apply to an entire drawing, object type, multiple properties. So this question was asking how many were on a certain layer. So I'm going to click layer here. Operator is equals and value is going to equal desk. So what it's going to do is it's going to select anything that's on the layer desk. And then in my properties panel, it says I have four objects selected. And then if I click the drop down, it'll be more specific with what I have selected. But ultimately for this question, they're just looking for how many objects are on that layer, which should be four. Okay. This one wants me to open up new floor plan. So I'm gonna click the folder again and double click new floor plan. Activate the offset named view. So there's two different ways to find these certain views because uh, it wants me to basically zoom into this living room type section here. Um, the way they say to do it in the in the drawing itself is to go to the view tab and then under the named views panel right here, click this little drop down and then we're looking for offset. Another way to do it is, let me move my properties panel a little bit. Another way to do it, and the way that I prefer to do it, and I'll continue doing in this video, is right here on this top view, under your view controls, if you just click that and go to custom model views, you can also go to the, the same list here. And I prefer doing it that way just because I don't like clicking back and forth the tabs. It takes up time. Um, I just think it's faster to do it here. So, now I'm in this section. I'll close my properties panel for now, just so I can zoom in a bit. Okay. It says, offset the outside edge of the table by 0.05 to match the image above. So what I've got is just a, some kind of an ellipse or something. I might need to zoom in here to select it. I'll bring up the properties of it so we can see what it is. Yep, looks like an ellipse. It just wants me to offset it out. I'm just looking at the picture to determine that it needs to go out because the, there isn't another circle that goes through the hatch. So I'm going to click offset up here, type distance. 0.05 enter and then zoom in a bit so that I can properly select the ellipse and move my mouse out and click again. It says what is the area of the newly created offset. I just click on the outside thing that I made and I'll scroll down here so that I can find the area and it looks like 2.72 all I have to do is type the 2.72. It's not asking for any more numbers. You can tell by these little um, pound marks or hashtags, whatever you want to call them right here. It just wants me to round it to the nearest two decimal places. This one says open empty floor plan. So I'm going to go back to empty floor plan. Since I didn't change anything, I'm not going to worry about closing this and reopening it. But just as a note, Whenever you go to a new question on these G-Metrics tests, it assumes that you're just opening the file for the first time, kind of fresh, without any changes to it. So um, as we progress through this video, I'll talk about that more if, if needed. Empty floor plan. It says, draw a hexagon inscribed within the existing circle. So there's currently only one circle in the whole drawing, I think. So I'm imagining it's talking about this. So hexagon 
can be found by going to the polygon tool right here. It's right underneath the rectangle tool. We click the polygon tool. On my mouse, it'll ask enter number of sides. That's where you have to tell it how many sides you want your polygon to have. A hexagon has six sides. So I'm gonna type in six. Then it's gonna say specify the center of the polygon. So the center of my polygon needs to be right here in the middle of this circle. And then I've got an option inscribed, which is what it says right here on the example. So I'm just gonna click right on that. And what that does is it makes the polygon exist inside of the circle. So I always try and make my polygon match what the picture looks like. Um, technically it doesn't matter. You could go to the right and get the same area, but try and make it look like the picture by going up and clicking on the quadrant. What is the area of the hexagon? Just gonna click on it, right click and go to properties. And my area is 4943.99. All right, we're going to new floor plan for question number four. And I'm just gonna close this new floor plan and hit no and reopen it. That way I just have a fresh file. Activate the table named view. I'm gonna go up here to the top, custom model views, and look for a table. That'll zoom me in here. It says use the grip to stretch the right of the table two units to the right. So this is the table they're talking about. This would be considered corner number one. And in order to stretch it to the right, I wanna click on this middle grip right here. You don't wanna click the top grip because if you were to do that and type 2, what it does... Oh, that actually worked. Well, I guess you could do it that way. You could do it 2, and then you could do it 2. Just kidding, that didn't work at all. Alright, so, <laughs> moral of the story is you want to grab it from the, uh, the middle right here because that stretches the entire polygon. Move your mouse to the right and type in 2, and hit Enter, and it should stretch it out like that. Then it says, what is the distance between point one and point two? Um, to do that, I'll just draw a line. I guess you could use the measure tool up here in utilities and do a distance. Let's see what we get here. Um, 3.68, but it's 9.2, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I need to round that up. I'm gonna type in 3.69 and see what happens. And that's correct. New floor plan again, so I'm gonna close, no, and open it back up. Open the new bedroom named view. That'll zoom me in here. Insert the two beds block named A, dollar sign, C, yada, yada, yada. So the blocks panel is up here, and I'm gonna go to insert, insert blocks. This file already has a bunch of different blocks loaded into it, so I'm looking for Looks like it's this fourth one on the list right here. It's got the two beds. So I'm just gonna click right there and it should be attached to my mouse. It says snap the creation point to the bottom left corner of the room, which would be here. So I'm placing my beds in that corner. Then it says, what is the distance from corner one to corner two? So again, I'll use the measure distance tool. I'll go corner one, which might need to zoom in because it looks like it's on the wall itself right there. So I'm going to zoom in and measure a distance from that point to that point. It looks like 3.37 is the answer for that. Number six, going back to empty floor plan. So I'm just closing and opening again. Activate the copy desk named view. That's gonna be here. It says copy the desk into the room below. Snap the top right corner of the desk to the top right corner of the room. So it looks like this is the desk that it wants me to copy because that's where it zoomed into when I did the uh, copy desk named view. So I'm gonna select this, hit the copy tool, snap the top right corner of the desk into the top right corner of the room that's below it, like that. What is the distance between point one and point two? Measure, distance, I'm looking for point one, which is the bottom one that I just made or copied, and then I'm going to point two there. 
All right, back to new floor plan. Activate the bathroom named view. Scale the length of the toilet to 0.75 using midpoint one as the base point. So here is the toilet. Um, I actually can't really see this blue toilet right here very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what layer this toilet is on. It's on layer toilets. So I'm gonna go to my layer properties right up here and look for that layer called toilets and I'm gonna change the color of it to something a little more legible that I can actually see. I'm gonna change it to green. That way I can at least see what we're talking about here. Scale the length of the toilet to 0.75 using midpoint one as the base point. So I'm gonna select the toilet, go up here to scale, select that midpoint as the base point, and then I'm gonna type 0.75 and hit enter. Then it says, what is the distance between the center of drain on the toilet and the center of drain on the sink. So I imagine it's talking about this is the drain of the toilet in the middle of the circle. They really should kind of mark where they want you to measure on the example here because they've done so on the previous ones. And I'm going to imagine that this is the drain on the sink, those, those circles right there. Utilities, measure, distance. And I'm going to go there two, I'm going to zoom in, looks like I've got 1.03, oh, it looks like it's wanting three decimal places, so let me look at that again, 1.032, and that's correct. So again, just always pay attention to how many hashtags or pound signs that they have right here, that's how many numbers you should be typing in. Number eight, new floor plan again table named view use the table shape to create a rectangular array with two rows and three columns except all other defaults okay so we're going to basically duplicate this table into six I'm going to select this table and up here I'm going to go to rectangular array and I'll set the number of rows because it says two rows in the question, and then columns to three. It says accept all other defaults, so I shouldn't be changing any other values. I'm going to hit close array. It says what is the distance from corner one to corner two? So again, measure distance. Corner one would exist here. Corner two would be there. And it looks like I've got 6.70 but it has an eight next, so I think I'm gonna round that up to 6.71. Let's see what happens. And that's correct. Number nine, new floor plan. Extended lines, named view. That's here. It says trim and extend the existing lines to match the image above. So this rectangle is this rectangle. It's supposed to represent an island in a kitchen, I guess. I mean, if I zoom out here, looks like we got a little floor plan. Maybe this represents an island. This is a countertop or something. It wants me to take these lines and extend them until it goes up there and then trim it so that it goes there. Another way to do this, if you don't like using the grips, is you can go up here to the trim and extend tool and you can extend click on this line and then this line again and then change it to trim and then click there now my picture looks like that picture there it says what is the distance between the midpoints of the new lines so that would be this line and this line the midpoint we know is right here the triangle so the triangle looks like we've got 2.4376, so I'm going to round that to 2.44. Alrighty, new floor plan again. I'm not going to close it, I'm just going to go to this next one. Mirror. 
It says create the second chair shown by mirroring the first chair across the center of the table. So I'm going to select the chair. I'm trying to get it to look like this picture. And I'm going to go to the mirror tool, which is here. I'm going to use the center of the table as my first point of my mirror line. And my mirror line is just going to go straight up like this. Uh, make sure your line is straight and it kind of snaps. And then when it asks you to erase the source objects, click no. Then the trick about this question says, what is the distance between the insertion points of the two chairs? So whenever you insert a block, because these are blocks, I believe. Let me check and make sure that's true. Is that the block? OK, I think. I think CAD 6, let's see if this is named CAD 6. It says it's a group, so they must have added the hatches or something later. Let me check that again. Insert CAD 6. So it looks like this is the chair. Um, whenever you make a block, you have an insertion point. That's where your mouse is connected whenever you're inserting the block. And if you notice where my mouse is right now as I'm inserting this block, is it's on the midpoint of that line um, going like across the seat right here. That's called the insertion point of the block. There's an object snap associated with that. So if I were to turn every other object snap off except insertion, what I would do is basically if I was trying to find where this was, you could kind of draw or, you know, maybe even do measure distance and just kind of search around until you see that insertion line come up or insertion object snap. I would click there and then go to there. It looks like my answer is 0 0.9849. I'm going to round that to 0 0.985. Hopefully that's right. Okay, good. And I would say after that question, you know, turn everything that you use back on. I use all of these intersection, perpendicular so on and so forth. Okay, so that's it for questions 1 through 10, and we'll continue on with 11 through 20.